How's it going so far, Haskell? It's going great, being out here, um, going through this process and just being around the guys. What have been the top main questions for you so far? No, um, really just, you know, how I can improve my game, uh, how it was this, this past season, how I took it on, and just really, you know, just more informal and formal interviews, asking me about uh, who I am as a person and what I did on the field. Imagine they've asked you a lot of issues and popping up another one. Mm -hmm. How are you physically? How are you tired of answering that? Uh, I mean, I'm 100%. And, um, it's just answering those questions and you know, showing them, especially at the Reese's Bowl, that I can play through injuries and that you know, I can, I'm can dependable. How, how, can you just kind of describe what you endured last year playing through those injuries? You know, what were they? How serious were they? How'd you deal with it? Well, you know, like... And um, especially when we played Maryland, you know, I had that little ankle tweet and going through that. It's just um, I handled it the best I could. I kind of wanted to be there. I didn't miss any games, but of course, just, you know, when we lost you know, the game, it was just very hard. But I wanted to be there as best I could. You know, going into the uh, Michigan State game, I was told not to play. And um, I wanted to be there for my teammates and be there for the last two games. They told me to rest, but... Um, we were chasing something bigger at the time, but then, you know, when we lost that game, I had to change my focus to my family and do what's best for me. Who told you to, to rest, and, and why did you kind of override that? Uh, really the docs, like, um, you know, just doctors outside told me to rest, and, you know, you need to, you need to heal. But I had a sense of urgency, and I needed to be there for my teammates, and I made that promise at the beginning of the season that we're going to make this run, and I, and I want to be there and help as best as possible. And it was just the ankle, or were there other things? Uh, it was just my ankle. Okay. So was your health a reason why you decided to opt out of a Rose Bowl? Yeah. How hard was that for you? Uh, it was really hard. You know, I, I was torn. I really wanted to, you know, finish the season and be with my brothers in that bowl game and, you know, say a farewell in a good way, but... I had to really take care of my health and get ready for the next step. You said tweak. What was the actual? It's probably more than a tweak. What was the injury? Oh no, it was a sprained ankle. Sprain. Yeah, it was just need to they need to get it right and let it heal and get get prepared for this big year. When you look back at your final season at Ohio State, how do you feel like it went? I feel like it went great. You know, both as a leader and as a as a person. You know, I just I think that I did I did exactly what I came back to do. I set new records for myself. You know, I made more sacks than I did the previous year in our COVID year, and um, I lived to expectations. When you when you think back on your Ohio State career as a whole, what are the biggest ways in which Ohio State made you a better football player and prepared you for this moment? Well, you know, sport football IQ and my technique. You know, Coach Jay's the best in the in the business. You know, in my in my opinion, as a defensive line coach, and so I think that Ohio State is not only prepared me, you know, both on the field but off the field as well uh, for this moment. Oh, I'd love to play football again in Las Vegas. Um, it was definitely a great experience playing there in high school. Um, I'm actually training there right now. So, you know, I just love being home, being in that environment, and just being around, you know, friends and family, and being focused and locked in. Um, you know, everybody has this perception about Las Vegas, you know, the strip and everything. But Las Vegas is actually a good town and place for me and my development and helped me get to where I am today. What do you want teams to know about you this week? Um, I want them to know that I'm a highly motivated guy. I've played in, I'm a very experienced player. I played in big time games all throughout my career, and that I'm bringing value and depth to their team. It was, it was my right. It was my right ankle. So the other ankle. My right ankle. Okay, but that was that was what was also bothering you at the Senior Bowl. The same injury from the season. Oh no! What was bothering me at the Senior Bowl? Um, you know, just kind of that. That, uh, that other guy up north, uh, my shoulder uh, kind of went down, but my ankles are fine. Everything's good to go. Was it, did you have to like kind of push through that to play in the Super Bowl? Like, why did you feel it was important to keep going that way if you were banged up? It was a goal of mine, you know, it was a dream of mine to play in that Reese's Bowl. It's something I, you know, you talk about guys who, you know, kind of get tweaks and injuries and they leave uh, to get ready for, for, you know, this moment and being at the combine. I want to stay there and and finish through and just be there because it was a goal of mine. 
or something I dreamed about as a kid. Did it sting more to have that happen against a guy from that school? Oh yeah, most definitely. Who was there a time when you were sitting in the hospital room and uh, late August with your father? You wouldn't be here today, you might have to sit down more than you did? Oh, I was confident I'd come back. I wanted to be back. I was highly motivated. Um, I trained my I trained my mind most definitely, and um, just wanted to be back with my brother, just and be on that field. I'd say about 80 percent of it. You know how to attack a guy, how he goes throughout the game, uh, how to prepare. It's just preparation. The game is played really mentally for the most part. If you, if you got confidence and, and anticipate instead of reacting, you can play the game a lot faster. And so that's what I truly try to um, prepare and do my game. I love it. Pascal, who are some of the returning defensive linemen at Ohio State that people should expect to step up this year? Almost oh, definitely. You should see Teron. You should see Zach. Of course, he's been there. You should see um, Tyler Friday. He's going to be healthy. You're going to see, you're gonna see Ty Hamilton, uh, Ty Leak. I feel like this um, so is up in there. You're going to see Jerron Cage. There's going to be a lot of guys up in there uh, working. So, you know, I'm. I'm I'm excited to see what the what the freshman got coming out. You know, I saw Tyler Hero and all those guys committed. You know, he's got Coach Jay always he always talks about. You know, we're not going to replace, we're going to reload, and so there's always a bunch of good defensive linemen coming to O State. What are the biggest lessons that you tried to leave with those guys? You know, just be a leader, have chemistry. You know, one of the the reasons why we we're so successful, you know, over the years is um, we all love each other and we have great chemistry. We can talk to each other. Um, you know, for instance, like when I was playing with Tommy, uh, we would just look at each other and have this kind of like uh, this mind control kind of, you know, we know what's coming the next play. And so it's just that that kind of connect connectivity between each other that we can play fast. Have you, what did you think of Toronto? Oh, I think he played great. You know, he was very destructive, um, impactful, laying hits on the quarterback. And that, I mean, that adds up throughout the course of the game. So, you know, he's really highly motivated. He's a leader in that room, and I can't wait to see how he does this year. We know that he struggled through injuries kind of like you did early on. Is he on a similar track as you, and that maybe he just needed a game like that to really elevate it? What do you see? Is that a turning point for him? Oh, I, I truly believe it's a turning point for him. You know, he's going to be great. He's going to come out, and he's a leader in that room. He's, he's got, other than Zach, he's got the most experience in that room. And, you know, the guys listen to him. He's in, like I said, he's a leader in that room, and um, he really knows how to motivate guys. What are some of your memories of uh, playing with Justin Fields, whether it's practice or being there within games? Oh, I mean, some of the memories playing with Justin Fields is just, you know, competitiveness. You know, he's always he's always talking about, y'all not going to get me, y'all can't get through, through the line. You know, little challenges through, throughout the course of practice, you know. Practice is really, really, um, it makes the game easier. And so we really get after it in practice, you know, iron sharpens iron, you know, going against those guys every day. And, and yeah. Your Tyreek made a splash early on. What would you want to say about him and where he can go? Oh, I can't wait to see how Tyreek develops over the years. You know, he's just a baby. And to see, to see him, you know, do what he did in just his freshman year, I can't wait to see how he, how he develops over the years. I think everybody goes through adversity. I don't know that anybody endured anything like you endured. When you kind of think about that, going through that, going through, you know, having the success you had on the field and then the struggles, and then you're here, what do you kind of think about your path? You know, without, I'd say without the adversity, I'm not who I am today. And it really fuels and drives me. And, you know, going through that uh, made me a better person, uh, better brother, better teammate, and overall, um, better man in this world. Have you had to answer a lot of questions about that this week from teams? Is that something, when you have something like that, is that something they, and what do you tell them? You know, I just I just tell them the truth of what happened, you know, just going through it. Um, I really just emphasize, you know, how I bounced back and what I learned from it and um, and what I did. You know, I didn't I didn't sit down and, and cry about it and, you know, um, really feel bad for myself. You know, I, I was highly motivated about getting back to ball. You know, it was the first time um, without, you know, injuries or anything, football was taken from me. And when I found found out that, you know, our, our season was reinstated, I just wanted to be with my brothers, you know. I really, I truly love the game of football. 
And so that's what really motivated me to get back, be back with my brothers. How did you change as a person from that incident? I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. there's got to be a lot of change. Yeah, you know, just perspective, how I, how I deal with things, you know, a lot of things that as an athlete, you got to, you see things and you want to help out and you want to, you know, intervene and stuff like that. But sometimes it's better, it's better to just, you know, call the proper, proper authorities and to just, you know, kind of not take the approach where you got to do hands on. You know, sometimes, you know, there's consequences with being hands on. So just understanding, you know, there's a right time and place for certain things.